on with us uh, when we are together with the uh, Vardia number two team in Venice. Uh, if, you could, <laughs> yeah. if you could just give a quick introduction uh, to who you are and then we will talk about the three questions that the curator of the pavilion is uh, posing to all our guests. Okay, uh, so my name is uh, Lila Dredels. I am the director of the Archis Foundation in Amsterdam. Uh, you see us here in uh, our office with our great uh, garden in the back. Um, we are a platform for architectural thinking and uh, debating about uh, architecture and uh, far beyond uh, the building. And next to me is Arjen. That's right, Arjen Oosterman. I'm editor-in-chief of Volume magazine and we're exploring present and future challenges to architecture. That's basically what we try to do. <laughs> Sound is off on your side. We don't hear you. So. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, getting used to it all. Um, so you guys were in Venice recently. Um, in the context of this biennial, or in biennials in general, what do you think? Uh, why? Why are they? Do the biennials exist? <laughs> I mean, we have these uh, three generic questions in a way that uh, get posted to everyone. Um, yeah. They're, they're a little bit tricky questions to ask as such, but I, I think we should still give them a shot in, uh, if you don't okay, mind. I'll yeah, give, give it a try. There is a differentiation between art biennials and architecture biennials to start with. And uh, we were discussing this phenomenon at the biennial uh, uh, when we were there. And for us, it's, it's striking that in, in, in art biennials, what is on display is art, the actual product. And in architecture biennials, you don't see the product itself on display, but it's always something that replaces or indicates the product being architecture. And that comes with uh, a differentiation in audience as well. The, the art biennials seems to, to be geared towards a wide audience and also, of course, to commerce. And the architecture biennials seem to focus on the discipline or the profession itself first and foremost, not exclusively, but um, the first that are addressed in these pavilions seem to be the professionals themselves. And that creates a different character uh, for the architecture biennial in comparison to uh, art biennials or design biennials. So why they exist in that context? Well, in, in, in general, uh, architecture is supposed to be buildings, theory, and uh, designs, so the combination of the three. And uh, biennials uh, supposedly uh, investigate or present the latest developments, but also propose uh, potential new ways to go to. And um, in that sense, it's part of the um, building up of the body of theory in combination with observations on present-day production, hopefully. Yeah, in, in that sense, you could say kind of st state of the art and, and discussing that, although we also do see a change in, in discussion around biennials and the potential of it. And, and we also see uh, biennials starting to emerge that want to challenge the the reason and the for being, uh, its being, and and try to achieve more than just the internal discussion, and actually try to use uh, biennial as a as a kind of leverage to to achieve other goals, and mainly to to actually change circumstances, and not only present but also act in itself. And I think the Turkish pavilion is is maybe. Uh, part of trying to do so, at least open up a discussion on doing so. I will get to back to this, but I want to go uh, to back to what Arjan was saying uh, in terms of the architecture biennial somehow being at a disadvantage to the art biennial. If that kind of, I, I took it as such, mm -hmm. what, uh, what you suggested. Um, but what, what, what does become successful in art biennial then? Can, can it do a biennial better than the architecture biennial? 
Is that the conclusion of, of that statement? Well, the, the, it seems that the, the biennial as we know it is a bit out of breath. It's, uh, it, it's had its best time, so probably. It is a 19th century concept of presenting top quality uh, in, on an international setting, an international podium. And um, there are so many media now present to, to, to update you on what's happening that the biennial is maybe in that respect not all that important anymore. So if the biennial uh, wants to be relevant, then it has to re reconsider its activities or the way it's, it's being organized and, and presents its material. And uh, in that sense, indeed, I think that the Turkish Pavilion is, is an interesting experiment. It's, it's not completely new to uh, think of the process instead of a product, but it's certainly worth a try. And then uh, you just mentioned other biennials. Um, I mean, there, there is one that starts, uh, I think, every year around the world. And uh, we have a young one also in Istanbul with the design biennial and also the art biennial here is not um to to old either and from kind of the istanbul perspective i always kind of defended the biennial uh that uh, i'm on the board of um advisors for the design biennial for the last two years i don't know if i will continue to be so but um that to to have it um in istanbul I thought in its also current kind of archive, uh, old format uh, is kind of valuable. Um, and our argument was always that to, to put together a good exhibition um, is also something um, worth doing. So a good exhibition, well, what are your thoughts on a good exhibition? <laughs> <laughs> but definitely, if, if you talk in terms of um, city branding, in terms of uh, adding to culture, all those uh, relations, then the biennial can, can serve that purpose, as uh, the blockbuster can, or, or uh, different kinds of um, presentations. Um, if you talk investigating the current situation and proposing um, directions, new directions or certain directions, uh, then the format of the biennial has to be reconsidered. And that's that's mainly what I try to tell. Fair enough. But no. you don't agree. No, you don't agree. Oh. If you consider uh, Mark Wittes uh, and Colominas. But that was a properly research-based but it was a biennial. <laughs> it, it was. It ended up as as biennial. But uh, you could ask whether it was a biennial or it was a very, very, very good exhibition, based on the long term research, uh, resulting in a very uh, interesting statement. And uh, it was super interesting to see that one. Uh, are we human? That, yeah. that that presentation to see that in the context of the uh, biennial in in Istanbul. Uh, it was also, I think, quite brave of the Istanbul organization to take that theme and that presentation as a next step in a sequence of biennials. It also um, set the stakes high for the next one. It, it is uh, in uh, two months. <laughs> introducing <laughs> it's introducing is a, a norm. Uh, well, that Jan Bulle has to uh, to cope with, I'd say, but. Um, but like, can the architecture discourse really go beyond itself? Is it? Is there any hope on that? Because I'm, I'm asking it kind of cynically also. But um, being an architect is also difficult to imagine us changing really. Why? Like, why people? Um, uh, because predominantly, if we want to build, we, we work for clients. Uh, and to let go of wanting to build is a, you know, that's kind of takes away the reason why you start the business in the first place. So, no, you could say that if you, precisely what you say, you work with clients. So, to do that in a good way, you have to go beyond yourself and beyond the discipline in that sense. I mean, because 
I think architecture per se is the discipline that has to go beyond itself and of course can go beyond itself in the sense of uh, dealing with with super important issues uh, of you could say designing the world or it's maybe too big but at least um, co uh, giving form to to societies and in that sense that you could say it's not going beyond because it's part of the profession if you include that as part of the profession then i agree <laughs> okay if you, if you think about building then i think uh, for sure you can um in that sense i mean it was in some ways a provocation of course but the um so was this biennial i guess with the theme free space uh, how, how did you what did you think about it? Was it um, did it really open up? I haven't seen it myself. I'm super curious to see it on Friday, and I'm trying to read, not read much. Uh, yeah, too biased, right. but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that was interesting to discuss the experience with others, uh, architects, professionals, and and relate that to my own or maybe our own uh, experience with the show. And uh, the people I spoke to said, well, there's, I saw such great project there and such an inspiring uh, intervention there. And, and yes, of course, it's all there. You can find interesting, maybe super interesting projects and, and uh, exhibitions in the Biennale. But as a curated show, I was somewhat disappointed, to be honest. Why? Because it doesn't go beyond the point of uh, showing inspira the, the inspirations of one office in Ireland. And there is no um, larger frame or uh, attempt to say anything on the present day conditions or hint at um, certain directions architecture may want to go or should go to um, on that level there's not all that much to be had in this show. Okay, let's uh, turn to the room. I'm sure there's questions in Venice also. Guys, <laughs> I we have one question. Um, thank you for the discussion. Um, you said um, exhibitions or biennials like this um, are beneficial for the city to brand itself or rebrand itself. And I was wondering um, through if the biennial has changed how it's reshaping Venice as a city, in your opinion. Yeah, for the Venice case, the, the, the very old biennial, and maybe Venice nowadays exists because of the biennial it seems to be a uh, yeah. and, 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 uh, really a motor of economy for for the city to survive um so change it's uh, hard to think of venice without a biennial to be honest uh, I, don't, I don't know the, the, the economic figures that are that should support this uh, statement but um, that's at least my hunch on how Venice uh, o operates these days um, for other cities it's different so if uh, Istanbul started the biennial some time ago an art biennial and a design biennial then that clearly comes from I would say a project of emancipation and um, also an, an self-awareness and cultural awareness in relation to the international position of, of a city like Istanbul. And in that perspective, it makes sense to create a biennial. And then of course, the next question is what kind of biennial and how do you continue that uh, project and process? But I can understand that, uh, that idea. Any more questions? Hello. Um, my question is uh, related to the transformation of the role of a biennial 
from this, uh, you mentioned the 19th century idea of a biennial exhibiting the, the latest very refined uh, projects. And uh, I, I can also follow the point of this uh, transformation, which is necessary to, to, to go beyond uh, what architecture is or kind of stretch the boundaries of what it can be to, to transform the, the idea of biennial. Then uh, just a couple of days ago, I think I read an article of Patrick Schumacher, who uh, was very sad and almost furious that uh, he claims architecture is given away its most uh, prominent stage of uh, presenting itself on, and just sharing among the disciplines what, which, which projects have happened in the last years. And I was wondering where this... Uh, this need, which I think still exists, is going if the, the traditional idea of a biennial transforms into something wider, let's say. Like, is it happening in the internet, on websites, which, uh, which share projects? I feel this is not a sufficient replacement for this stage in which uh, actual projects can be discussed and shared. Mm -hmm. The team say that in relation to the current biennial in Venice? But it sounded like a general complaint. Repeat. Ah, I think he said it in, in relation to this uh, specific uh, biennial, but uh, with, a, with a bit of a general remark. Mm -hmm. Because it surprises me because, because I think specifically this biennial is catering to, to his needs. Uh, in the sense of uh, having a lot of projects uh, there to discuss and 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 understand and and um, and and create into the discussion, but in general, I, I I'm inclined to say that yes, you say the internet, but uh, also most of the magazines are actually doing nothing else than just displaying projects and and. My uh, complaint there would be that it would be more presenting projects in, in terms of, uh, of displaying them as, as almost uh, the press release from, from the architectural office with no comments. Uh, but of course, I mean, they are there and they're open for discussion. So if you would want to, you could enter them and... Uh, uh, start discussing them and and that doesn't happen enough i i agree on that but it's not that there are no platforms for architectural projects i i think there are many 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 no, yeah there, there are many but i understand the remark of uh, patrick slightly differently in the sense that he calls for a far more biased uh, way to present and to discuss and in that sense, there don't, doesn't seem to be a point of gravity in the world of uh, dissemination and publication anymore. In the past, there were a few titles that were uh, really central, that everyone knew and everyone respected. And that kind of um, hierarchy is uh, lost in the multitude of voices and, and media. And in that sense, it's far more difficult to... Um, dominate the debate and even to tell where the debate is currently happening. Um, maybe in that respect, the, the, the biennial could play a role, could uh, resume or retake that position in the field, if at all, but maybe it can, but then it really requires a strong hand to do so. Thank you. All right. To uh, continue that, um, I guess what you are alluding to are the uh, is the last one really the deconstructionism or whatever deconstructivism show that uh, really kind of tried to claim a, a direction to. No, I don't think so. I, I think that the uh, one that uh, that Rem had it the twenty fourteen. Uh, uh, no, no, but in terms of like kind of uh, really showcasing architecture for architects and kind of claiming this is where the uh, building uh, this is the future is yeah, going, mm. going and this is yeah. what we read now. There, I guess there has been a couple more. There was a... 
Hmm. Anyhow, yeah. yeah, okay, so there's someone could take that uh, <laughs> as a role. Um, any more questions? Maybe we can have a question to you guys. Question to you guys. How does it feel to be a part of a way of doing the biennial with the proposal for the pavilion? As a process pavilion, not as a project pavilion? Uh, do you hear? Uh, actually, I'm a bit uh, surprised because I was expecting a kind of a more. Uh, we have just a uh, fine chance to uh, look at the first part of the pavilion where the uh, selective projects of the offices are uh, exhibited. And uh, actually, I was like, uh, as you mentioned, somehow uh, expecting some projects uh, just. just having a kind of a different approach to the uh, term of free space. I mean, they are all different projects, uh, uh, but uh, the variety between the projects are seen, uh, I mean, weak to me, uh, actually. But it's it's a very, uh, you know, I think it's very inspirational place. And also, the uh, I also admire the uh, works of the Turkish Pavilion also. Uh, I think the uh, ideas will develop more in the next coming days since we uh, look at other pavilions. But uh, I also think the same that we have uh, that uh, they have said in the first uh, moments of the talks. But the BNS has to uh, exhibit the uh, experience somehow of the terms of. I don't know what's the theme of the year, but I mean, they had to get some kind of a new approach to the uh, team, I guess. And I will add something too. If sure, please. It's okay. Sure, please. Um, uh, actually, I was afraid of, uh, because of the process is way better, uh, it's process is really good idea. I thought the works uh, by the Vardias would be, uh, I mean, would be shaded by the process and it would, it, so, but I mean, what I'm trying to say is after we came here and looked the last Vardia's work and the process we are uh, working on and the task that we will do, the program we will get, and I realized that bo both process and the work are can be good at the same time. None of us shades the other. That's why I love the idea of this time. Perfect. This one. Perfect. Yeah. But that sounds promising. Uh, that sounds uh, promising. Uh, <laughs> for us as the <laughs> workshop <laughs> instructors. Workshop. Anyhow, uh, Aryan and Lilith, uh, as well as uh, comment, do you have any recommendations on uh, which pavilion not to miss out uh, in the Giardini? Uh -huh. They have one day tomorrow to see um, half a day. Half a day. Well, not half, until four o'clock. To see the Giardini? Yeah, so where? What I not to miss out on? Um, whoa. <laughs> I would go to Israel, I would go to Holland, I would go to... Um, I would go to Switzerland as well to to compare um really nice japan was japan, japan. Okay. korea um they were raving about the u.s pavilion not that good or which one the u.s yeah 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 they were i mean as a whole <laughs> You don't agree? No, as a, as a whole novel, but less, a good I was less, less impressed. I love the movie of uh, Laura Bird. And, yeah. and, uh, okay, sure. <laughs> and as, a, as the whole pavilion well, of talking, the talking, movie. talking movies, don't miss the VNA pavilion. Oh, yeah. yeah, really, don't miss the VNA. And don't if you if you hit the VNA pavilion, don't stop at the entrance, but go all the way to the end to where the actual movie is shown, because that movie is stunning. Okay. And mm -hmm. it, on Robin Hood Garden, said Robin Hood Garden uh, demolition of the Smithsons, but it's diagonally under the Turkish Pavilion. Oh, so it's where you guys are actually. It's just underneath. It's very close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Leta and Arian, for joining us. It was really pleasure Thank to you. Thank you. And uh, enjoy. And yeah. we'll see you in Istanbul, right? In uh, September. Yes, for sure. Right. For Looking sure. forward. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.